We're now done with discussing the first uh, subtopic of the first part of the module 3, which is balancing equations. Let's now proceed with the second one, which is the different types of chemical reactions. First, what are chemical reactions? A chemical reactions is a pro process in which at least one new substance is produced as a result of a chemical change. You have to remember that in a chemical change, during a chemical change, there are chemical reactions that occurs. Okay, what are, and we are also talking about here, at least one new substance is produced. Okay, when we are balancing equations, we kept on talking about reactants and products. Okay, let's take a look at this example. So we have here, this is hydrogen gas. Okay, so this is hydrogen gas, and we have oxygen gas, okay? So looking at these two, okay, they are the reactants. This side, the hydrogen gas and the oxygen gas is the reactant. And upon interacting with each other, we have a new substance that was produced, which is water. Okay, this is a result of a chemical change. Now, what is this chemical change that we are referring to? How do chemical reactions occur? Take a look at this one. What happens in a chemical reaction? So, during a chemical reaction, chemical bonds between the atoms break in the, re break in the reactants and new chemical bonds are formed. So the bonds in the reactants, okay, the bonds in the reactants, they break, okay? The bonds in the product, okay, the bonds in the product are being formed, okay? The atoms rearrange to form a new bond. As chemical bonds break, again, this is the reactant side, the position of the electrons change, resulting in products with properties different from the reactant. Take a look at this one. Again, going back to the hydrogen gas and oxygen gas that will produce water. Since again, we have here the reactant side, we have the product side. It says here, bonds, okay, chemical bonds between the atoms break in the reactant side. So in the reactant side, the bonds here break, okay? They separate, these atoms separate from each other. And then, new bonds are formed. Here are the new bonds that we form in the product side. The atoms rearrange themselves to form new bonds, okay? Instead of being paired with hydrogen and hydrogen, oxygen and oxygen, they are rearranged into a pairing of two hydrogen and one oxygen. That is the arrangement. The rearrangement. Okay? And then, as you can see here, we said this are hydrogen gas. Okay? It's gas in form. And water, of course, is liquid. Okay? Meaning, products have different properties, different from the reactant. Okay? They are different in properties. Okay? Not only the bonds are being changed, but also the properties of the products. Okay? Just to repeat it, chemical bonds between atoms break in the reactants. So in the reactants, they break. Okay? And then in the, products, uh, in the product side, they form new ones. Now, what are the evidences of a chemical change that we are referring to? So, there are different chemical changes that we are referring to during a chemical reaction. So, first, we have what we call a, what we call a color change. This is the usual or the most prominent chemical change to observe during a chemical reaction. So, when a colorless, an example here given is when a colorless hydrochloric acid is added to a red solution of cobalt to nitrate, 
The solution turns blue, a sign that a chemical reaction has taken place. It's much easier. Actually, uh, color change is the easiest way to predict or to see if a chemical action has, a chemical change or chemical reaction has occurred. Okay? There is also the existence of a precipitate. When we say a precipitate, it's a solid, okay, it's a solid residue that forms when you combine two chemicals together. Let's say, for example, a solution of sodium dichromate is added to a solution of lead nitrate. So this results into a yellow precipitate. Okay? A precipitate does not dissolve. Okay? Does not dissolve in a solution. Okay? It's a solid that forms in a solution. Next is gas and heat. So how do you observe gas since you cannot see it that much clearly by the naked eye? So you can observe the formation of gas by observing the formation of bubbles in your experiment or in your uh, chemical. Okay, bubbles of hydrogen gas form when calcium metal reacts with water. So the formation of bubbles indicates that there is a formation of gas. There is also an evidence of chemical change. One of them is heat. Okay, when there is an increase in temperature in the solution or in the chemicals that you combined, then there is chemical change. Odor change is also a prominent uh, chemical change. Let's say, for example, in rotten eggs. Rotten eggs produces pungent smell, and that pungent smell indicates that there is a change in the chemical makeup of the egg. Okay. Okay. This chemical, uh, you can observe this chemical changes more in the laboratory as we do our, our uh, laboratory activity. Now, there are different types of chemical reactions that we will be discussing. Okay, So we have here five different types of chemical reaction, and we will discuss the difference and their functions one by one. Starting first with the combination or the synthesis reaction. Okay, Combination or synthesis reaction is when a single product is produced from two or more reactants. Let's take a look at this. Okay, let's take a look at this formula. So we have here reactant A. It can be a compound. It can be a. It can be a an element. Reacts with reactant B again. It can be a compound or an element, and it will produce a product. And that product is simply the combination of reactant A and reactant B. So it's simply A plus B will produce A B. Okay. Let's take a look at this examples. We have examples on this side. We have here hydrogen, and you combine it with nitrogen, okay? It will produce ammonia. Okay? And ammonia is simply NH3. It's simply a combination of both nitrogen and hydrogen. Next one, we have magnesium oxide plus carbon dioxide. It will produce magnesium carbonate, okay? We, have, we still have the magnesium, carbon, and oxygen. Next. Carbon monoxide plus oxygen will produce carbon dioxide. As you can see, they're simply combining with each other. They're simply adding these elements with each other. And then next, we have your sodium and chlorine. It will produce sodium chloride or what we all know as salt. Okay, So that's how simple combination is. From the name itself, it's a combination of the two reaction to produce a sorry, uh, it's a uh, it's the combination of two reactants to produce a product. Okay, let's proceed with the next one. The next one is decomposition. Okay, decomposition is where in a single compound breaks into two or more simpler substances. As you can see in this one, this is the formula. A, B will produce A and B. So this one is simply the opposite. Okay, it's simply the opposite of 
combination. If in combination, you're combining the two reactants, in this one, you're separating the reactant with the help of catalyst. When we say catalyst, these are uh, methods that will speed up the chemical reaction or that will help the chemical reaction. So we have here heat. Heat is symbolized by a triangle. You also have the electric current and you can also have light. Okay, with the help of this three, okay, either of these three, they can help decompose or to separate the reactants to simpler substances. We have here examples, as seen here. We have here ferric hydroxide. With the help of heat, okay, it will decompose into ferric oxide and water. Okay? And then we have here water. With the help of electric current, okay, it will okay, it will separate into hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, and then we have silver bromide. HV simply stands for light. Okay, exposure to light or an electric current. Too. It will separate into silver and bromine. Okay, and then and then the last one we have the carbonic acid. Okay, that will separate into carbon dioxide and water. Again, this is light. Okay, that's how simple the composition is. It's simply the opposite of combination, where in reactants are divided into their simpler compounds. Okay, just like this one, water is divided into hydrogen and oxygen. Next, we have the single replacement. Single replacement or single displacement reaction is when atoms or molecules replace an atom from a compound. Take a look at this formula shown below. So we have here A plus BC will produce AC plus B. Reactant C Reactant C disintegrated or was the bond between B and C was broken. And then after going chemical change, reactant C attached with reactant A, producing AC compound plus B. Okay, let's take a look at this one. We have magnesium and the copper nitrate. We'll produce magnesium nitrate and copper. As you can see, the nitrate was transferred from copper to magnesium. Okay. Next, zinc and hydrochloric acid will produce zinc chloride and hydrogen. As you can see, hydrogen and uh, chlorine were separated from each other and chlorine transferred or bonded with zinc, producing zinc chloride and leaving hydrogen behind. Okay, and then the last one we have chlorine plus, plus calcium iodide will produce calcium chloride and iodine. Calcium iodide and calcium and iodine separated from each other or their bond broke, broke, and then calcium bonded with chlorine, okay, producing calcium chloride and iodine. For us to know which is uh, displaced and during a single displacement reaction, we take a look at the activity series of metals. Okay. So we have here our sample chemical equation, zinc plus hydrochloric acid will produce zinc chloride and hydrogen. Okay. So we have here the increasing reactivity of metals. This means that, say for example, at the last part of this arrow, we have gold. Okay, Gold now has or, or is the least reactive. Okay, Compared with lithium, which is the most reactive. Okay? The one that are being displaced and is being replaced in this equation is zinc and Hydrogen. So here is zinc. 
And then here is hydrogen. Looking at our uh, activity series of metals, we can see that zinc is more reactive than hydrogen. Thus, it can replace okay, it can replace hydrogen from being paired with chlorine. Okay, the more reactive a metal is, okay, the more reactive a metal is, the more it can re uh, replace, okay, or displace the other one. Okay, again, since zinc is more reactive than hydrogen, it can replace hydrogen. Okay, let's take a look at other examples. Let's take a look at this one. This one is now is in the activity series of halogens. So we have here chlorine plus calcium iodide will produce calcium chloride plus iodine. Okay, now looking at this, iodine is the least reactive while chlorine is the most reactive. So what are the atoms or elements that are displaced? So we are talking here about chlorine and iodine. Because iodine replaced, I mean chlorine replaced iodine. So looking at this reactivity series of halogens, we can see that chlorine is much reactive than iodine. Thus, it can replace iodine from being paired with calcium. Okay? Next, we have the double replacement. If it's single replacement, you only need to replace one or, it, or displace one element. In this one, two substances exchange parts with the other and form two different substances. Okay, So in here, we have AB reactant side. We have AB plus CB will produce AB plus CD. As you can see, they exchange their Okay, they exchange D and B. Okay, exchange their position. Okay, thus uh, making a whole new different substance. Let's take a look at our examples. So we have here potassium bromide and silver nitrate will produce potassium nitrate and silver bromide. So potassium and bromide, their bond, okay, is destroyed and silver and nitrate also remove okay and then uh, potassium bonded with nitrate producing potassium nitrate and then silver bonded with a bromine producing silver bromide okay then we have here sodium sulfate and strontium chloride will produce sodium chloride and strontium sulfate okay they're simply exchanging partners Okay. And then last, we have hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide will produce NaCl or sodium chloride and water. Okay. By the way, this arrows pointing down, this indicates that uh, there is a solid produced, meaning there's a precipitate that is produced. Let's take a look at the next slide. During double displacement, there are two possible processes okay, or chemical reaction that can occur. First is pre precipitation. This occurs when two ionic compounds okay, are dissolved in water and form a new ionic compound that does not dissolve. This is what we call the precipitate. Okay? The precipitate, again, is solid, does not dissolve. Okay. For example, NaCl or salt and a silver nitrate will produce sodium nitrate and silver chloride. Silver chloride will be your uh, precipitate. Okay. And then next, we have neutralization. Neutralization is usually observed or most likely to be observed in acid-base reaction. From the name itself, acid-base reaction occurs between acid and a base. An aqueous acid-base reaction generally, generally produces water and salt. 
Okay, let's say for example in here, HSO4. Okay, combined with NaOH will produce an aqueous solution. Okay, which is also considered as a salt and water. Here are some of the different examples. So combining a strong acid and a base will produce water and uh, different kind of different kinds of salt. Okay, again, precipitation and neutralization involves the process of double replacement. Next, last part of our chemical reactions will be the combustion, or this is the reaction between a substance and oxygen which is in form of a gas or air, that evolves into heat and light. Okay, so when you hear the word combustion, you're, it, you're immediately thinking of fire. Okay, so reaction between a substance and oxygen okay, evolves to heat and fire. Let's take a look at our examples. So we have here carbon plus oxygen will form to carbon dioxide. We all know that. Okay, so we have here also propane. Okay, a type of alkane or some hydrocarbons. Usually, these substances that we are referring to are hydrocarbons. So, we have here pro propane plus oxygen will produce carbon dioxide and water. Methanol, okay, combined with oxygen will produce carbon dioxide and water. And then, as you can see here at the bottom, carbon dioxide and water are the usual are the usual uh, products, but there's also light and heat, which is in form of a flame. Okay? These uh, chemical reactions, you'll be dealing with them much further during our laboratory activities. Okay, again, that was the last part of our discussion for chemical reactions. So we'll discuss five types of chemical reactions, namely combination, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and combustion. Okay, let's now go back to our objectives for the first part of our module three. We have the chemical equation. So we've, we're done discussing writing and balancing chemical equations and the different types of chemical reactions. So we've already written and classified chemical equations properly. What are their uses? Why do we use chemical equations? Because it's more convenient to use. Okay? It's much easier to visualize the uh, chemical process or the chemical reactions that occur. We've also tried to balance different chemical equations correctly by solving or by balancing different examples of chemical equations. And we also differentiated the types of chemical reactions, which is uh, combination, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and combustion. Okay? As I've said a while ago, you'll be dealing with this dif uh, different types of chemical reactions more. They will be discussed more when you are in your laboratory activities. Okay? And then we're done with part one of our module three outline, okay? Please proceed with the activity after watching this module and then take a quick break, okay? Take a break and then proceed with the chemical calculations. Thank you.